Hello, my name is Lynn. I'm Robert. And I'm Carrick. We are Group B and we are doing analysis for Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated. All right, to start off, we're going to give you some background information on Coca-Cola Bottling Company. They are the largest Coca-Cola bottler in the U.S. that serves in 14 states and has over 300 products. This company makes, packages, and distributes the Coca-Cola products. It was started in 1902 by J.B. Harrison when he wanted to bring the Coca-Cola brand to the Carolinas. In 1983, they started an aggressive expansion strategy that led to smart investments, more partnerships, and large profit gains. They have a strong value system and an emphasis on servant leadership. All right, next up is their strategy, and they operate under a broad differentiation strategy with many different target segments. They have a very unique and effective advertising and marketing program, which is based around spreading the positivity of life stories. How they do this is incorporating donations, youth programs, and Habitat for Humanity. They also incorporate eco-friendly products as well as wellness-focused products. For the driving forces, first of all, we have evolving taste. The demand is constantly changing now as a day, and so that requires companies to keep up to date with all the new trends and new flavors from consumer, consumers. Um, and so the goal is to fulfill those demands. Um, in order to do that as well, we need to focus on technology changes by doing research and strategy to come up with new product lines so we can expand our products and fulfill those demands. Um, the material cost is rising day to day, and so even though our company is, is a big size company, we have strong bargaining power over suppliers and buyers, we still need to have good cost control to save resource to invest to something else. Growth in the industry is the last one. Um, it is really important for companies right now to be able to produce and distribute more products um, to different areas, and so they will be able to grow in size and increase their profit. For the key success factors, first of all, company must have strong product innovation capabilities because the demand is constantly changing right now, and also the industry is very attractive, and therefore, company needs to expand products to fulfill demand and keep its position. Secondly, company needs to have good advertising and marketing strategy. Um, effective strategy helps company to drive consumer, consumers' interest and therefore um, we will be able to stay competitive with all the other competitors. Third, we need to have strong relationship with consumers. Consumers are very important in determining the life of, of our business and they are very knowledgeable. They have other sources to compare our company with other companies. And so we need to provide good experience um, about our products to consumers. And so we'll be able to keep a stronger relationship and therefore we'll be able to last longer. <laughs> Lastly, we need to have efficient supply chain that can minimize our costs. Companies um, in this industry use large volumes and low price and produce products with low price per unit. And therefore, we need to keep costs low, and so we'll be, we'll be able to maintain good profit margin. So, for the SWOT analysis, we have uh, for the strengths that the company leverages Coca-Cola's brand awareness, uh, has large production capabilities, strong bargaining power, access to Coca-Cola's innovative technology, uh, access to a large variety of beverage choices. For the weaknesses, we see the company's business model leaves little flexibility in their production, uh, that they have suffered some inefficiencies in operations lately. Uh, dependence on Walmart is very high. Uh, website has very little content, and the social media is underutilized. So for our opportunities, we have further expansion into other states, use of cheaper materials in production, uh, increasing the beverage selection, they can acquire a supplier or acquire a distributor. For threats, PepsiCo, obviously. Uh, they could also, there's also the increased environmental awareness, uh, increased health consciousness, rising materials costs, and the volatility in the current presidential administration might create tariffs on products we just don't know. Results of the income statement analysis show uh, gross profit margin started 4.13%. 
increased to an all-time high of 40.38% and then decreased to an all-time low for the period of 35.64%. Operating profit margin also decreased over the five-year period, started at 4.5%, fell to 2.38%. Net profit margin actually increased from 1.69% all the way to 2.38% in 2017. So return on equity has actually seen a decrease over the five-year period, uh, starting at 10.77%, reaching a high for the five-year period of 2.41%. Uh, this is because equity has stayed relatively the same over the five-year period, while overall net income has actually seen a significant increase. Uh, meanwhile, return on assets has fluctuated over the five-year period, starting at 2.17%, reaching a high for the period of 3.52%, and ending at 3.35%. This is because of the system's transformation. The company has re recently acquired a lot of assets, and the growing net income and has matched the growing assets for the company. So for the strategic concerns, we have that response to health concerns has been slow, uh, that the website has weak functionality, consumers can't distinguish the company's name from Coca-Cola's name, social media is strong, has a strong presence, but is underutilized, and operating efficiency is suffering due to the system's transformation. Lastly, our recommendations. Our first one is to partner with, a, with an athletic brand to bring more light to healthy options on the product line. Secondly, is to modify company's website and social media posts and the last one is to cut material costs and market the change as a healthier alternative. We think Co-Consolidated needs to partner with an athletic brand to adapt to the changing consumer lifestyle, especially younger generations. America as a whole has seen a drop in soft drink consumption every year since 2011. With a more healthy and more fit lifestyle, this brought about another noticeable difference in this generation. This young generation is heavily influenced by athletic brands. A blueprint that we can follow is the Gatorade and Jordan brand partnership. They partnered to produce shoes, clothing, and commercials to bring um, about a more nostalgic feeling to their older consumers. We could use this at Co-Consolidated to do the same thing, but with a younger promising athlete to reach the millennials that need to be reached. For the second rem recommendation, we recommend the company to modify the company's website and their social media posts. For the website, in the customer order products, Section, they should have a product catalog for equipments and they should list all the products, um, nutrition facts of each, and then group them into three main groups. First of all is carbonated refresher, including all the soft drinks that they provide. Wellness is going to include um, water, tea, and sport drink. Other products right here is going to include milk and coffee. Second, in the website, in their community, they should combine sustainability and wellness into one section and then have a video for the content. The video should continue, the video should um, include several scenes that, um, the first scene would be the manufacturing process using eco-friendly solutions such as uh, water efficient technology. And uh, all the products came out should be placed into two different sections. One would be soft drink and the, the other one would be how they are options and then deliver them to different places and charity event. The last scene would be the company collecting all the bottles and cans, getting ready for them to be delivered into the recycling process. For the social media, they have a Facebook page. They should show manufacturing videos, all the equipment product deals, and all the recipes that people can do with their products. And so that would be a very efficient marketing strategy that would help to boost the company's image in, custom, in customers' eyes and also raise awareness of all the society concerns and that way they can differentiate themselves from other competitors. Our third and final recommendation for the company is 
to switch from high fructose corn syrup to a form of granulated sugar and to market the change as a healthier alternative. Uh, right now, the cost of high fructose corn syrup is going up in the market, and many companies are already making the switch to granulated sugar. McDonald's, for example, is using granulated sugar in their hamburger buns rather than high fructose corn syrup. We know that the company currently uses high fructose corn syrup 55 as their primary sweetener. We also know that based on USDA data that the price of high fructose corn syrup has gone up in recent years and last year it actually raised by about six cents. Um, we, further, we know that the price of beet sugar uh, saw a decline a few years ago and that it has roughly matched the price increase of high fructose corn syrup 55. Uh, the difference being about seven cents. Uh, that seven cents would translate into big savings for the company if the company made the switch. Now, the question becomes, how would the company possibly make this switch? Well, assuming that the company does not still have the equipment to put granulated sugar into their drinks, we have a few ideas. Okay. So one of the ways that this could be accomplished is through what's known as an induction mixer. Uh, basically, the sugar gets loaded into the top hopper and it gets funneled into the pipe as water flows through the pipe it mixes with the sugar. How do you get it into the hopper? Well, you, our best guess would be that you would use what, what's known as an auger. The auger would use this spiral inside of the tube to carry the sugar up to the top and dump it into the hopper. Uh, our estimates are that the company would need to meet a volume of 10 million units per day, and to accomplish that, they would need eight of these devices each. And based on our estimates of a cost of $20,000 for the induction mixer, $2,000 for an auger, this totals out to under a quarter million dollars for all the materials that you'd need for this process. Uh, based on the 10 million units per day and the difference of seven cents between beet sugar and high fructose corn syrup, we estimate that this could save the company as much as $25 million per year. In addition, the company could market this switch to people who are concerned about high fructose corn syrup and the effects that it has on their children and market it as a healthier switch. So the first recommendation is partner with an athletic brand to bring more light to how the options on product lies is going to solve problem number one health concerns, and problem number three, indistinguishable brand. For, um, recommendation two is modifying the company's website and social media posts will solve problem number two with website fun functionality and the four concerns under utilize social media. The last recommendation, cut, material, cut materials cost and market the change as a healthier alternatives will solve problem number one, healthy concerns, and the last problem, suffering operating efficiency.